What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another C++ SDL programming tutorial. In the last video we were creating sprite groups. We created a few classes, one for a sprite object itself, and I'm actually going to code fold that, and a, another one, sprite group, that would keep track of multiple sprite objects, and we'd be able to kind of keep track of them and uh, draw them all together, add, remove, and uh, test whether or not we have them, update multiple sprites at the same time, and uh, that sort of thing. So that's the, uh, the benefit of what we were doing in the last tutorial. In this one, we're going to move on to images. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file as 08a um, images.cpp. Okay, cool. And now, what I want to do, or at least what I want to go ahead and get started with, is I want to talk a little bit more about our sprite class and our sprite object. I'll open that right back up again. And uh, I, I, I want to talk about this class because I think it's important to note that we designed this class, we built this framework, and we set up this blueprint, so we'd be able to use other objects and instances that are sprites that are images or kind of movable characters in the game. So the the sprite, the class the sprite is the base class. It's it's kind of abstract because we want to be able to override and, and grab more from it. This is just the framework that most things will build off of. So what I'm getting at is that the sprite class is going to be inherited by anything that we really actually create. Now, if we want to inherit anything from a class. In C++, we know we have these uh, kind of access member kind of qualifications or attributes. We have the private members, we have the public members, and that sort of thing. We also have what are called protected members. And private members won't actually be inherited if we have a, another class or another object inherit from this base class. So this needs to be changed. No longer than being private, we're going to change this to be protected. Anything that's protected will be actually accessible to any children. Um, so if we derive from this class, if we inherit from this, uh, the sprite class, we'll actually be able to go ahead and use these attributes and, and variables and properties that we've already set. So that's easy enough. That's, that's pretty good for us. The next thing that we need to do is actually create the new class that we're going to use that is based off of the sprite class. Now, I'm just going to call mine block you can call yours object or instance or anything that you really want to. And the way that we denote inheritance in C++ is uh, by using the colon, and that's the shift formation of the semicolon on your keyboard, it should be right to the L key, and um, then we need th the attributes that we want to inherit, and uh, I'm going to say public, um, because that'll actually grab everything from the uh, parent class. And next we actually need the parent class name. So in this case it is sprite, because we're inheriting from this class up here, the sprite class. Then of course we need our uh, braces and brackets to denote that we have a code block, and then we can go ahead and indent with our white space. Now we'll create our public definitions here. Uh, we don't have anything private because anything that we really care about is already being inherited from this sprite class. So we do need the constructor though, and funny enough, the constructor is really just going to take all the same arguments as our original uh, sprite class, so I'm actually just going to copy and paste this, and uh, we'll throw that right in there inside the parentheses, and we want to say that, okay, once we have this block constructor, once we actually call the constructor for this object, what we're going to do in turn is call the constructor for the parent object, or for the sprite class itself. And again, we denote this with a colon. So create a colon, and then we just type in sprite. I'm actually going to create a, a, an enter line here. Um, sprite, because that's the, the parent object that we're using, we're actually going to call its constructor, and we'll pass in all of the variables that we've already been passed to the original constructor. So, again, now we don't use the uh, variable types, but we still want to pass in the same arguments for color, x, y, width, and height. So, that's good. And we can do anything more after this, if we just uh, supply a few more code blocks. So, after this, after we've ran the original um, sprite constructor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a new function that we're going to create called update properties. And this is going to be a void function. We can go ahead and create that void update properties. It's not going to do much, 
but it it isn't going to take any arguments even. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the origin x and the origin y to be something specific to this object or to this block. This is the benefit of actually creating it in classes and that sort of thing. And I'm going to create or I'm going to call a new function that we're going to create called a set position. And that is going to take a few arguments. It's going to take the x and y coordinates of this object itself. And you know that we access that by our rectangle, our, our SDL rect. And we have that set up in the variable rect, so we can just use rect.x and rect.y. Now let's go ahead and create the function that actually does this. The way that this works is uh, by another void function set position, and it's going to take some arguments. It's going to need an integer x and an, obviously an integer y. These are the coordinates that we use to set the position on the screen. And the way that we can set it up is by telling the rect x, or the, the SDL rect that we're using to maintain this object's coordinates, that is going to equal x that we've passed in minus origin x. So that way we account for the origin and obviously the place that we want to go to. And we can do the same for y. So. Awesome. Now, the next big function is what we're going to be doing that uh, actually gets to the core of this tutorial. Uh, I said we were going to be actually getting into images and uh, more multimedia and things that you can include in your, in your game and in your program, and that's exactly what we're going to incorporate right now. So, let's set up a new function. This isn't going to return anything. It's going to be void, and I'm going to call mine set image set underscore image. You can call yours whatever you want, but it might be a good idea to name things after mine. Now, what I'm going to pass in for an argument here is essentially a string. And this string is going to, again, go through this function and go to a much more uh, elaborate function that SDL provides that actually loads a file and loads the image into our program and into our code. So, the way that I set this up is by setting up a constant variable, c-o-n-s-t, and it's going to be a typical string, a, a, or a C-style string. And the way that we build that is by an array of characters. So uh, I could use an asterisk or anything here, but I'm just going to use um, an array denoted by two braces. And the variable can be called file name. By default, I'm going to set this to be null. And uh, that way we can just test, okay, if we've actually even passed anything into this function or not. When we get our code block ready, we can test if file name is not equal to null then we know we actually want to be doing something. And uh, then we'll actually get started with an SDL surface. Because obviously, the image has to be stored somewhere. And uh, that, that image that we load is going to be stored in an SDL surface, just like our sprites have been stored in, and just like, obviously, the, the screen on, in our window. So it is, a, it is a pointer. We're going to need the asterisk, and I'll call it uh, loaded image. You can call it whatever you'd like, as usual. And by default, this is going to be null, but what we're actually going to do is reset it. Loaded image can equal, and here's where the new handy-dandy function that we're going to be using uh, comes in. It's called sdl underscore load bmp for load bitmap. Let's check this out in the documentation. I'll hop over to my uh, internet browser over here, and uh, the, the URL for sdl online is libsdl.org. If you want to get to the documentation, it's wiki.sdl, wiki.libsdl.org, or from the main page, you can just click on the left-hand side, documentation, wiki. I wanted to search for SDL load BMP, but from what I've seen, uh, it's given me some trouble here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to API by category. Oh, sorry, sorry. API by name, and just kind of control F for SDL load bitmap. And I see it right there. Okay. Use this function to load a surface from a bitmap file. Uh, the syntax is very, very simple. Just It'll return a surface pointer, and it takes a array of characters for the file name. And that's exactly what we've set up in our function, because we take that as a parameter, and we'll just pass it right in. Awesome. Uh, in the documentation, it doesn't really say anything more other than that. So uh, we should be good to go. Uh, we got to keep in mind that the new surface should be freed with SDL free surface, and uh, we're going to get into that very, very soon. Let's keep going regardless. Um, next, what we'll do is we'll actually test if the loaded image was successfully loaded, and the way that we'll do that is we'll test if loaded image is not equal to null, because if it is still equal to null, then there must have been an issue. 
that's the benefit of uh, having it be set to null to begin with. Now we can go ahead and set up a uh, actual image that we're going to use from this loaded image. Actually, we don't even need to do that. I, I, I have in my notes over off on the side here that I reset the image variable for some reason, but I don't think there's any need for that. Oh no, it, it, is, it is good for that because that image variable is actually the self image for this object. The sprite itself needs to know the image that we've already loaded. So image is going to equal loaded image. Okay. Now, the next thing that we kind of need to uh, take account for, or at least accommodate for, is that when we reset the image, when we change the image for this sprite and for this object, it actually changes the rectangular properties. You know, the SDL rect, and the way we've been keeping track of our, of our rect information with rect.x and, and rect.width and height and that sort of thing. Well, those are kind of changed if we were to change the image. And we don't want to do that. We want to actually keep track of the current position and w without it being reset. So we're going to keep track of some variables. I'm going to call mine old x, and I'll have another one old y. And I'm sure you can guess, these are going to be um, the rect.x and the rect.y uh, properties before we actually reset the new rect value. Because eventually, rect is going to have to equal this new image that we've loaded, and uh, it, is a, it is a pointer to keep in mind, so we have to use the arrow selector, uh, it's, it's clip rect. And that way we can return the specific rectangle that we're using for this image that we've just loaded. And now we'll be able to access it within our block object. And eventually, ultimately, because if you go through the class hierarchy, our sprite object. So that's kind of cool. Now we'll reset our new rect.x and uh, rect.y variables to be what we've just set beforehand. So this is just kind of a small variable swap to keep track of the information that we had previously. And finally, now that we have the rect x and rect y set up, we want to apply the origin. So the way that we did that is by in our uh, update properties function, so we can very easily just go ahead and run that one more time. Update properties. Nice. Now, I believe we should be good with our block class. Uh, we haven't seen any kind of errors or anything just yet, but then again, we haven't really even compiled. So let's go down to uh, the main portion of our code, and let's see what we can do here. We have active sprites, and we've got uh, other objects. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kill these, and uh, we don't need any testing of the has and that sort of thing. We do, however, want to draw them on the, sprint, on the screen, but let's go ahead and create a block. Uh, we're going to use the block class. We just write that with it with its capital letter to denote that this is the type of the object we're creating. It can be a block. Uh, the by default will be the color red, and we'll put it at the zero zero place on the screen. And then we'll add it to the active groups group, and that will be drawn onto the screen for us. And I believe that should be good to go, or at least uh, a good testing portion. Let's hop over to the terminal. I'm going to clear the screen because I had a, a good mess happening over there. And we'll compile it with G++ 08A, whatever the file name you had, and package config with libs and C flags for SDL2. If I run this, oh, I do get an error. Int main error object was not declared in the scope. Oh, duh. We want to add in actually the variable block since that's what we've just created over here. Nice. Now let's run this. And I need a semicolon at the end of the class definition for our block object. Run this again. Okay, now it compiles. Let's run a.out. If I move this over... Okay, it looks like the center of our, of our object is being put... It looks like the origin is being put at the center, so we do have an issue. Let's check that out. Okay, after some tinkering, I think I figured out why the origin might be giving us some problems. I, I realized in the uh, code for the sprite class, I had already applied the origin, and uh, it might be a good idea to kind of leave that alone, in at least until the, well, you know, the, the, the block or the inherited object is the one that actually deals with the origin. Uh, it, it might be a good idea to declare the variable in the sprite uh, 
in the sprite class in the protected definitions, or at least the declarations, but actually only apply it when we inherit the class. So that's what we have set up here now. Um, I, I just removed the origin from the uh, sprite class one, and hopefully, okay, yeah, see, now it puts it in the in the zero, zero position just like we wanted. Okay, great. So now we can go ahead and actually include an image. First of all, we need to go find one. Um, I, remember I had said, or at least uh, the code that we wrote, says we're going to load a bitmap. It's SDL load BMP. Well, by default, SDL only supports bitmap files or BMP files. So, at least for now, what we're going to have to do is just find one online because I'm a little too lazy to go ahead and, and make one of my own. So I'll look up um, BMP sprite, and I guess we'll just kind of look all over the internet, symbol stupid Google results until we find something that we like. Uh, eh, the rocket looks good. I'll view that image, and I'll go ahead and save this as Sprite, I suppose. Sprite.bmp, and I'm going to replace whatever's there. Because I, I have been testing this beforehand. Alright, and now, in our code, once we create the block object, what we can go ahead and do is actually do block dot set image because that's the function that we wrote remember and the file name all it takes is a string for sprite dot bmp and when we run our code compile this no errors we check it out and whoa we've got a rocket uh, taking off right into the subscribe text at the title of our window. That's awesome. All we did was load an image. It's a simple bitmap that has a, still, still a white background, but it looks kind of nice. And we've successfully loaded an image, even onto a sprite, even a, an object that we created ourselves. So, that's awesome. Hope you enjoyed this. I uh, hope you enjoyed this pretty simple tutorial. Um, there's a lot more to it, I suppose, than we're actually inheriting the sprite class, changing the private variables to be protected, um, showing how the constructor is working, creating all these other functions, and getting the origin to work the way, we want, the way that we want it to. But, thank you guys! <laughs> this has been fun, and I hope you're having as much fun as I am. I'll see you in the next tutorial.